Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our C++ programming series. In this lesson, I'm going to continue talking about the inline keyword. We've talked about this before with function inlining, but inline is something new in C++ 17 that allows us to create inline variables. So let's go ahead and look at CPP reference and see how this works. So over at CPP reference, I'm going to go ahead and just search for inline here. Let's go ahead and look at the first entry. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Now, if you've been following this series and you can check the description below for the playlist or otherwise follow along, we've talked about function inlining, this ability to sort of recommend as an optimization, a way to embed code into our uh, other functions. Okay, so that's a little bit something different than what inlining means for variables. So I'm going to go ahead down to this definition here. So the first ones have to deal with uh, function inlining, but uh, the idea with the inline specifier here for some uh, declaration of a variable with static storage. So that's going to be important here, thinking about static storage here um, within a class member or struct, which I'll use in this example, or some namespace scope variable declares the variable to be inline variable. OK, so a static member variable uh, declared const expert is implicitly an inline variable. OK, so let's go ahead and talk about the examples here uh, with a little bit of code just so we can understand what's going on here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just open up a main here. And I want to create some other uh, project where we can inline or bring things in. That's really what the purpose of this inline uh, variable is for here. So I'm just going to go ahead and create something called struct HPP here. Um, and what I'll go ahead and do is uh, create a new window here for struct uh, HPP. And here it is. I've saved us a little bit of time here. And the idea is anytime I have a project uh, like this where I have some struct and I want to have a static member function, again, let's bring in CPP reference here. Uh, it's talking about static member variables here, uh, which is what I have here on the left here. So let's go ahead and see if I just try to uh, compile this. OK, so uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do, and I'm including the struct here, is let's use G++. Uh, I said this is a relatively new feature, so we need at least 17. I'm going to compile with 20 and my main here. And let's just output this as program here. And uh, of course, I'm including my header file. So if I compile this, uh, no problem so far. So let's actually use the struct. So I'll go ahead and create a struct S here. Uh, and I want to go ahead and use this variable. And since it's const uh, int here, let's just go ahead and print it out here. Uh, so this is part of struct and some value. And again, if you need a little bit of review on static and what that means, basically, you can watch some of the other videos. But all it really means is this is shared or there is one sort of instance created inside of the struct here. OK, uh, so let's go ahead and try to uh, compile this now. Just make sure you save with any changes. And well, it compiles. The source code is actually fine. But what's happening here, and I'll move out of the way so you can see the actual error, is I'm getting a linking error, undefined reference to struct some value. OK, and what you might be saying is, well, Mike, uh, I see it here. But the reality is we haven't compiled in the code. We know that this exists here. It's part of our struct. So this is legal C++ syntax. But really, we need some help here to actually give this some sort of uh, definition here for this actual value here. We need to actually create this somewhere in our code. OK, because again, remember what header files are. They're interfaces that say, hey, this is what a this data type struct looks like. It contains this member. But what is actually in that member? And if it's static, we need to statically initialize it with something. Now, I can try here, for example, to say equals, uh, let's try something like 8, a value like that. Um, and let's go ahead and try to uh, redeclare it. Um, and in this case, this is uh, fine here. OK, again, it's going to compile. But let's go ahead and, uh, uh, well, let's compile it, give it a run. And uh, let's see if we get eight here. There we go. And we do get eight here. OK, so no problem as long as we statically initialize this. But let's go ahead and keep playing around with this a little bit and see where inline can be helpful. OK, so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is let's go ahead and get rid of the const here and just make it some value. Again, we'll go ahead and compile it. And hmm, OK, now we're getting an error here. But 
it was just fine. So what's this error message about? And saying ISO C++ forbids in-class initialization of a non-const static member here. Okay, so I have some value equal to 8 here, and it's not const anymore. Okay, so what do I actually need to do to initialize this? Well, now what I need to do, and this is a common thing that I see you know, my students or other beginners run into, uh, we need a CPP file, right? We need to actually compile something where again, we can initialize this value. Because again, the compiler error is telling us, remember our header is just an interface. So we're not allowed to actually say or put in some actual data there. That's what our C++ files are for actually doing the work. This is just sort of our definition here. So what we need to do here in struct CPP is let's go ahead and code struct. And now we need to do, um, we'll create an int here and say for our struct some value that is equal to eight here. And I'll give it a different value here just so uh, we can see that it works here. Uh, and again, I'm, gonna get, I'm still going to get a compiler error here. I need to get rid of this, right? This is forbidden uh, if I try to compile here. Uh, let me just go ahead and show you that. Uh, so I'll put in my main here and then carefully add in our struct CPP. So like an error, we need to just remove this, right? Because we are initializing our variable. Uh, so let's get rid of that there. And now I can compile and this should print out. Well, what is our thing initialized to? 63. Okay. Uh, and that's great uh, because, well, what does that give us the advantage of now? Okay. I, well, I've created this other file, which sort of complicates my project a little bit here. Um, but now what I can do here is, of course, I can change some value here. Struct some value equals, you know, 94 or whatever. And let's go ahead and compile this again, run it, and you can see it, right? It's not const as we had before where we weren't able to change it. Okay. So now where does this inline keyword finally come in, you know, seven minutes into the video here, just so we understand is, well, now what I'm actually able to do in modern C++ 17 and beyond is let's go ahead and get rid of that. And I have something uh, static here. So I'm just going to inline it. And let's go ahead and try that same experiment. Let's go ahead and initialize it to 63. Uh, I'll go ahead and comment this out here. And let's go ahead and uh, try to recompile. And it compiles this time, which, well, that's great. Uh, let's go ahead and run it. And, well, it's giving us 63 here. Um, well, isn't that really neat here? This idea that now if I have something that's not const and static, I can just initialize it here in this struct here. And again, that's sort of the point here. So again, just to show you that we can, again, modify something that's not const, we don't need this separate C++ file. In fact, I'm just giving these uh, different values every time, just so you can see. Uh, let's initialize this to like 67, uh, just to see if I comment this out again, uh, that we should get 67 this time. Okay, so there we are here. So it's initializing a non-const value uh, here within our struct. So if you're implementing something like a header only library, which could be this struct.hpp, now I don't need to, you know, compile in this extra C++ file. In fact, let's get rid of it just to show off this experiment. Again, uh, you know, nothing to worry about there. So it's a way to really clean up uh, some of our code uh, header files and so on that, um, you know, these header only libraries I think this makes it more convenient. I'll have to read up more on modules and some of the other newer stuff to see if that uh, also solves some problems, but it just makes things a little bit cleaner uh, in our language. Now, by default, if I have something static that is const expert, uh, so let me go ahead and just set that here. Um, I can go ahead and initialize something that's uh, const expert here. Uh, that's effectively because if we go back here uh, and let's just go ahead and show that this runs. Um, the last part here of the CPP reference, it says const expert is an implicitly an inline variable. Okay. So again, it's just saying, uh, what that means or how to read this documentation is, yeah, you don't need to create a separate C++ file that it's, you know, linking in and able to determine what the actual value is. Okay. Um, so I think you'll read a lot of tutorials on how inline works. Let's go ahead and just set it here. Uh, but the advantages are right. If you have something that's not const. Uh, or const expert, uh, which by default you can assign, um, then you can just use inline here, which, you know, gets rid of some of this extra, uh, you know, stuff that we have to do either creating the C++ file or just trying to keep track of in two places, um, 
what exactly the you know value is or has this been initialized again it can be a little bit of a tricky error uh for a student to get uh again let's get rid of this inline keyword here um, if you get something uh well something like this here that's you know forbidding uh initialization here uh so let's go ahead and make it uh const uh right because we're allowed to do uh, or deal with const that's fine uh, but again, i think it's just a little bit of a tricky um, error to run into here um, and if you you know set up something like this again and get a linker error as you're learning about compiler uh, errors versus linker errors um, so again the idea is just do inline here now when we inline it let's see what happens again sorry just another example here uh, without initializing a value let's see what's in there well maybe it's zero here again i'll actually have to check the spec to see if that's uh, a guarantee but you know we would want to uh, initialize this to you know something uh, reasonable here uh, actually let's just do 10 again to do some different numbers here um, and there you go okay so that's inline it's it saves us again making our code a little bit easier to maintain uh, here in C++. I'd recommend just taking a little look through here. You can see some more of the examples here. They've got some for inline uh, functions, but this is inline variables, which is new as of modern C++ 17. So there you have it, folks. This is really a feature that helps with the sort of linking uh, of our programs together and making us being able to write a little bit cleaner code in C++. So I think it's a nice feature, something that you could adopt in your code base. So folks, if you enjoyed this lesson on inline variable, now that we've talked about inline functions and have inline variable covered, uh, we'll go ahead and move on. But just give this a like if this was useful. And otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lessons. And thank you, as always, for subscribing, watching, and for your time and attention. Take care, folks.